Okay, hello everybody. Um, my name's James. I'm a lecturer in digital history at the University of Sussex in the UK. And today I'm going to talk to you about library carpentry. So to give you some background on library carpentry, um, I'm a firm believer that librarians play a crucial role in cultivating world-class research. And in most disciplinary areas today, world-class research relies to some extent on the use of software. Established non-profit organisations such as software carpentry and data carpentry offer introductory research skills um, training um, with a focus on the needs and requirements of research scientists in relation to software. Library Carpentry is a comparable introductory software skills training program with the focus on the needs and requirements of librarians and information professionals. In its initial exploratory run, um, Library Carpentry was funded generously by the Software Sustainability Institute in the UK. It took the form of four three-hour sessions held at City University London Centre for Information Science um, across four successive Monday evenings in November 2015. These sessions attracted 59 participants from 14 institutions in London and the surrounding area. Now, there were some contextual reasons, obviously, by, behind the reason that I went ahead and sort of developed um, the idea of library carpentry. Um, the first was that in 2007, um, the editorial introduction to the inaugural issue of the Code for Lib Journal declared that, quote, this is a decisive time for libraries. Digital services, content and tools have become a part of nearly every aspect of library operations. The digital library is here. If you work in a library, you probably work in a digital library. Now, librarians who work in these libraries have a wide range of roles, and I myself, until um, September, used to work at the British Library um, as a historian working at library, working with the digital collections at that institution. Within many of these roles, it's clear that there's the potential for applying programming and IT skills which allow for the automation of tasks and the manipulation of data. Nevertheless, whilst the digital library has since 2007 fundamentally altered what research libraries do and are for, the integration of software skills into the work of librarians has remained somewhat uneven. As Andromeda Yeltsin notes in her 2015 report, Coding for Librarians, Learning by Example, significant social and political barriers do remain. Andromeda writes, many library coders spend a significant amount of time trying to cultivate buy-in educate their colleagues about technology or work against siloed organisational structures as they produce inherently cross-departmental work. So in light of these and um, many other institutional and intellectual contexts and concerns, um, Library Carpentry had three aims upon its inception. The first was to blend non-library specific software skills um, training such as software carpentry, data carpentry and the programming historian. With existing library specific programs such as the British Library's internal digital scholarship training program which I once coordinated and data science training for librarians and to kind of blend these into a public offering aimed at librarians seeking an introduction to software skills. The second aim was to collect some data on software skills in research libraries. It wasn't intended that this would be um, sort of super rigorous data, but nevertheless collect some information that could sort of help us develop in the future. And the third was to build the foundations for a community model for embracing and sustaining software skills in libraries. So to move on to the delivery of the program of library carpentry itself, um, the program was aimed at beginners, required no prerequisite knowledge, and was tailored to align with the needs and requirements of librarians. It proceeded somewhat thus. Um, session one covered the basics of um, programming, so sort of programming concepts in essence. Um, we had an ignorance amnesty where we asked people to talk about things that they thought they should know more about in relation to software and programming and then share with each other and what we found is there's many things that we all think we should know more about and don't know as much about as we should and I think that sort of made everyone more comfortable with one another. And then we did an introduction to regular expressions. Session two covered the Unix shell, very much in the software carpentry model. Um, session three covered version control in Git and GitHub, again very much on the software carpentry model, but included some work with GitHub pages as well. 
Session four covered cleaning and transforming data in OpenRefine. Now there were four overarching themes that were used across the syllabus to kind of bind it together, but also to reinforce learning. The first was command line interfaces, um, which were used obviously with the Unix shell, but also with the work with GitHub and Git. Um, the second was regular expressions. The third was plain text formats. And the fourth was consistent naming conventions. The syllabus was also built around software tools with strong and diverse user communities, um, use cases with clear relevance to library practice, and functionality found in multiple software tools. The choice, for example, um, to offer a session that focused on the interactive data cleanup tool OpenRefine was made not only because OpenRefine is a powerful software tool for manipulating tabulated data that is well liked by librarians, but also because OpenRefine queries are built on both regular expressions and on programming languages. And these then introduce um, learners to clear, well-documented and well-constructed formatting and um, programming syntax. During the course of these sessions, we also collected a huge amount of feedback um, from attendees. And there were three um, feedback mechanisms in particular I'd like to talk about. The first took place at the beginning of each session. Um, attendees at the beginning were asked to self-report their skill level based on the topic at hand. And to do this, they were asked to complete the sentence in relation to the topic this week, I know dot dot dot. And they were asked to respond with one of four options. That was nothing, a little, lots, and lots and lots. Now, at the beginning of sessions two, three, and four, more than three quarters of attendees reported knowing nothing about the topic at hand. Attendees were more confident on concepts, so session one we were introducing kind of programming concepts, suggesting that there is a, an existence of a basic set of knowledges in the portion of the library community that attended upon which software skills could be built. The second feedback mechanism took place at the beginning of the third session, um, the program midpoint. Attendees were asked to articulate ways in which what they had learned might be used in their daily practice. Now, some analysis of these, um, these responses shows a strong cluster anticipating using software skills to improve their search capabilities. Concurrent with these are clusters around large data sets and reviewing library data such as repositories. Attendees also reported anticipating using the skills learned at Library Carpentry to better understand software related possibilities in their workplaces. The third feedback mechanism that took place was at the close of the final session. Here attendees were asked to articulate what they might need to pass on to their colleagues the skills they learned at Library Carpentry. Analysis of these responses shows that time and practice are important requirements to passing on skills learned, and in a way that's not unexpected. A smaller cluster reported needed and needing more worked examples from which they could build their own skills to then pass on to others. Organisational barriers um, to passing on skills learned were also reported, um, and these were described in two particular forms. Um, one group reported having insufficient IT permissions to apply the skills developed at Library Carpentry in their workplace and hence to pass them on. And a second and more nebulous group reported that their organisational culture was either unsupportive or lacked the communities they needed to embed software skills in their workplace. Together then, the demand for library carpentry, and I should say that we, we had 59 attendees across the, the four days, um, the four evenings, um, but there were many more people we had to unfortunately turn away who found out about it late or wanted to come once the, uh, the series had started, um, but we just couldn't accommodate them physically in a room. Um, so together with that demand and the feedback we got drawn, of course, it must be noted from a very self-selecting audience, um, I think they point to three interesting provisional findings. The first is that librarians both value the acquisition of software skills as part of their professional development and report a low competency in such skills. The second is that librarians report undertaking activities that could be improved by the acquisition of software skills. And the third is that librarians face challenges to acquiring software skills um, and to embedding those skills in their workplace. Now, the Library Carpentry pilot um, may have finished, um, but this doesn't mean that Library Carpentry is over. 
Um, a longer version of this talk will shortly be published as a paper. Um, and I'm currently evaluating as well the short to medium term benefits of attending Library Carpentry to both attendees and their libraries um, through semi-structured interviews with attendees. And finally, I'm kind of looking to migrate the lesson materials somewhere um, where they'll be more sustainable, or at least the, the adaptations that we made to fit them towards Library Carpentry are noted in some way that other people can build on them. Library Carpentry for me confirmed there's a demand an appetite and a will amongst library and information professionals to acquire software skills. Um, and it's interesting to note that the materials were already re reused um, and repeated both in Australia and in Norway. And there's been a variety of interests from different stakeholders, including yourselves, um, about how this kind of program might fit in their local context. As these librarians um, and as software skills are both vital components of world-class research, I see library carpentry very much as a timely, um, if modest, intervention into the research life cycle. Thank you.